Hi everyone and welcome. You're here today with Andra Carmina online as Andy Valkyrie Divine and I'm still filming live from Atlanta, Georgia and uh, today was actually our last day at the conference called Art of Success with David Nagel and we've learned uh, some more uh, no, I shouldn't say some more. We've learned an infinite amount of things today, and I mean, it's just been, um, again, just as you know, transforming as it has been yesterday, if not even more so, because we already have the awareness that we got yesterday through the exercises we've done. That um, today it's even better because we're kind of starting to get it, and it's like, oh yeah, and it starts to click, and it's really cool. Um, so I just wanted to uh, to film one more video for you guys uh, live from here because it's not going to be the same once I get home. Uh, I can still film the videos at home, but it's just not the same vibe. And I really, you know, I'm enjoying the the hotel room, the hotel view. I'll show you guys the view in a minute uh, after I'm done with the video if I don't forget. Um, so I wanted to share with you some tips today and you know because it's called the art of success and uh, you know my program is called uh, the sevenfold path to success and so there's obviously similarities there and I wanted to to talk a little bit more about success and how we perceive success and what distinguishes successful people from unsuccessful people um, you know and, and the one thing that really makes the difference that distinguishes successful people from unsuccessful people is the fact that they're willing to do something that they've never done before in their life that they weren't willing to do before but now they're ready to do that or they're willing to it's not that they're ready we're never ready um, so that's just an excuse but they're willing to do what it takes to get them to where they want to go and so that's the distinguishing factor between success and not being successful. So, uh, with that in mind, the other thing about success is that it's not about convenience, right? You're not successful or you don't focus on your success and where you want to be and what you want to do just when it's convenient. Because a lot of the times, it's not going to be convenient. A lot of the times, it's going to be annoying, it's going to be painful. Uh, you're going to have to do things that you don't want to do to get where you want to be. And so, the whole idea about it is that it's a full time thing. You don't become successful just when it's convenient to be successful. And so you always want to um, motivate yourself to do what it takes, but constantly, right? So it's not just when it's convenient, but always. Um, and so that's another thing that I would say is very important when we're when we're considering success and what success is about, um, you know, in a, in a in a nutshell, and really, I mean, the, the key to that is, you know, typically, <laughs> David was saying that, you know, if it's a pain in the bum, uh, you probably know that you're on the right track, because success is not supposed to be comfortable, it's not supposed to be, you know, in the beginning stages, of course, when you're doing the transition, and that's what we're focusing on, right, the idea is to get from where you are to where you want to be, and so I'm discussing from that perspective of where you are to where, you know, the, the transition to where you want to be, uh, you know, it's not comfortable and it's not supposed to be comfortable because it's change and change strips you of the security that you have of what you know, which is based on your past, which means you have to do something different in order to get different results than the one that you're used to when you're having and currently experiencing because that's what you're manifesting. Um, so, you know, you need to get out of your comfort zone. It's always going to be a little bit awkward. You're always going to be a little bit at e ill at ease um, when it comes to stepping out of your comfort zone, when it comes to, uh, you know, learning to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And, and that's what successful people have to do. You know, it's, it's a must. It's not, again, it's not just when it's convenient. It's not just when, oh, I feel okay. I think I can do that. You know, it's not like that. It's like, I'll do whatever it takes. I understand that. I need to go through pain, I understand that I need to, um, you know, take a look at my blocks, release things that are not serving me, all kinds of things, let go of people that are not serving me, um, you know, where I want to be, etc. So there's a lot of steps involved and, um, you know, you have to stay with that discomfort. In order to succeed, you have to stay in that discomfort until you learn to become used to it and it's not so uncomfortable anymore. And a lot of the people in this in this transition, when they take the leap, a lot of the times mm, people get to a point where they just can't take the discomfort anymore and there's so much pressure that all they want to do is just get the release. And when that happens, when you reach that point, you're going to go right back to where you started because you just can't take that amount of pressure. And so it's very important to 
uh, you know, just to, to, to stay with it and, and having a coach, having someone around you who knows just where that line is, where it's like, you know what, just hang on just a little more and you're, you're just there, you're almost there, um, is really important to keep you on your, um, on your path, on that transition, because it's really hard, you're already taking leaps of faith, you're already like, oh my god, I'm doing all these things that I'm not used to doing, um, you know, and, and it's very overwhelming, it's uncomfortable in the beginning, remember, it has to be a pain in the, mm, in order for it to actually tell you that you're on the right track, okay? Um, so I know it sounds a little counterintuitive, but it's it's really how it works. Um, and the other thing is that you know when you when you have this desire to go towards where you want to go to succeed in a certain direction, any time that you have a desire or a want in your life, it also means that the the means to manifest that desire, the means to make it happen, have to be there at the same time no matter what the desire is so if you resonate with a desire or a want within you what happens is at the same time the means to make that desire happen have to be there um, and so I will talk about what David says is called the law of polarity and the law of polarity is, uh, is this concept where everything is created as a whole, right? If you look at nature, if you look around um, objects, everything, it's, it's a whole, it's a totality, right? Um, and the law of polarity, what it says is that, you know, if you look at anything, you know, there's a left and a right, and there's an up and a down, and there's good and evil, and there's uh, lack and abundance, right? So um, there are these kind of like opposites, and that's what the law of, of polarity is all about, is that it's all as a whole, if you look at it as a whole, what happens is when you have a problem, it means you also need to have a solution, right? There's always, they're always connected, right? And and that's the thing. When you look at a pen, you know, it has a top and a bottom. Um, it has a left and a right, and they're all connected. Otherwise, you don't have the pen. So by default, you know, same with the book. If you have, you know, the front cover of the book and the back cover of the book and what's in between, and they're connected to have the book together as a book, right? Um, and it's the same with concepts like uh, ideas, uh, you know, if you have a problem, you need to have a solution as well. It's just how it is. The, 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 the issue that we run into is that we cannot see the solution. And, you know, the whole is on one side the problem and on the other side the solution. However, we just uh, are not able to see what we're not able to see, right? Um, and that is the solution. And the reason why we can't see it is because we're operating from the, the the type of thinking that created the problem. And, you know, um, Einstein said that you cannot solve a problem with the same thinking that created the problem. There's no way for you to find the solution if you're thinking in the same mind frame or the same mindset um, that created the problem. It has to come from somewhere else. We have to think outside the box, right? Um, and so it's really about changing how you think about the problem that will actually enable you to see the whole and to actually perceive a solution that is out there that you couldn't see before uh, because you only had vision for one side of it. So that one side, the problem, is, is your reality. It's what you're experiencing. However, you know there is another reality out there that you're just not tuning into. It's still out there, but you just don't see it. So, um, you know, just because you don't see it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, you know. And a lot of the times we say, oh, I don't, you know, I, I, I don't have enough money, I'm, I'm lacking money. And it's like where there's, where there's lack of money, there has to be abundance of money too because they're connected. Lack and abundance are, you know, as, as part of the law of, of polarity, they're both connected, right? They're diametric opposites. So, um, again, by default, we have, you know, a left and a right, an up and a down. And inside and outside, um, you know, and it's the same thing with, with abundance. Abundance is a, a continuum, right? And you go from lack on one side to wealth on the other. And abundance is basically the, the concept, the truth that we're, um, that we're perceiving. And so that's the, um, that was one of the things that I thought was really, really brilliant in that, you know, uh, you start to get to the solution by starting to think outside the box. And this is really where, um, you know, having a coach and, and having uh, the right kind of resources into place to teach you how to think outside the box, to teach you how to start seeing the solution, because the solution is there. It's just that you don't have the ability yet 
to see it. And um, so we've done a lot of exercises all day today. We've been practicing, you know, how do we see our problems? How do we see that we're stuck? And how do we know that that's really the problem? Because a lot of the times, you know, we set up other problems that mask the real problem. Um, so it's been it's been really um, uh, just just amazing. I mean, like the the examples that we've gone through and the things that we've uncovered and understanding that you know, um, if you don't focus on the real problem, you're just creating more problems. And so it really, um, you know, going through the process of understanding how to isolate the real problem is really what's gonna get you to solve all the other ones that you've been creating uh, that you just cannot perceive the solution to. So um, that's that's some of the stuff that I wanted to share with you today. I mean. There's so much. I mean, I think I could I could talk for hours, um, but I just wanted to share some of these things with you, just to to get you thinking a little bit outside the box, and um, you know, think of it as as um, in terms of wherever there's a there's a, a place of fear or a problem, there's also a place of opportunity and a solution. Um, and really, your biggest problem is also where you're going to find the the best solution. You know, it's just a matter of like I said changing how you think about it and it's really in your mindset that it all happens um, and so this is the kind of training that we're getting in terms of isolating those things and sort of digging in and and seeing you know what what really is it that's holding me back right uh, what am I resisting uh, when I do this and so um, yeah I've, I've just been mind blown again uh, for another day of this uh, of this event and so I just wanted to share with you some of these tips I'll film again in a few days um, tomorrow I'll be getting home and uh, I'm gonna catch up with all the Facebook stuff and uh, the comments the emails all of the things that have been going on and uh, so yeah so I just wanted to uh, to share this with you, and I'll be seeing you again in a, in a few days. I do want to to keep this up and, and send you uh, little things regularly, whether it's a video or uh, you know a little blog post or things like that. Uh, I do want to connect with you, and and um, I'm doing my best, even if I'm not home, even if I'm in remote places like Atlanta, Georgia, to uh, to be there for you and to just uh, to share my experiences with you. So thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Blessings. Mwah.